The one who prays is a theologian. The one who is a theologian prays. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one true God. Amen. Renowned words attributed to Everigus of Pontus. The one who prays is a theologian. The one who is a theologian prays. This profound statement underscores that those who pray embody the essence of theologians. Prayer, or even the yearning for it, perpetually beckons us towards God. It signifies the enigmatic work of the Holy Spirit within the human heart. When we say the one who prays is a theologian, we acknowledge with humility that each of us experiences prayer in the Spirit. In moments of genuine prayer, the grace of the Holy Spirit within us kindles a longing, a yearning, a plea for help, a surge of emotion in response to the cosmos' beauty or compassion for the suffering that envelops us. The Holy Spirit guides us into communion with the Son, Jesus Christ, through the mystery of the Incarnation, with its debasement, humiliation, suffering and death. He instructs us in compassion by allowing us to share in the Lord's suffering. Through the path of the cross and death, he leads us to a new life and resurrection. He carves out a new realm within us, where Christ emerges with his visage, both as the man of sorrows and the risen one. These two facets coexist as the stigmata of crucifixion in the body of the risen one shine as beams of light. As we delve deeper into his mystery, the Lord elevates us towards the Father in an infinite, ceaseless ascent. The adage, the one who prays is a theologian, introduces an authentic theology beyond verbal expressions and concepts, theological doctrines and even dogmatic declarations. These constructs serve as necessary safeguards against potential pitfalls, but their foundation rests on these live encounters within the Trinitarian mystery. However, the latter part of this adage the one who is a theologian prays, poses a challenge, a critical inquiry to those who perceive themselves as theologians. It challenges those who believe they possess the charisms of theological discourse, teaching and knowledge, for these are indeed charisms bestowed by the Holy Spirit. Any contemplation of God's mysteries and his works constitutes a judgment hinging on whether there is alignment between the theologian's words and actions, between discourse and prayer addressed to God. Speaking of God in the third person carries the inherent risk of divorcing speech from life, of neglecting God in the second person and the indispensable connection between dialogue and prayer. Theology may then become a vocation, a perilous intellectual and conceptual exercise that drains the soul. Athen Agoras of Constantinople humorously remarked, let us gather 
all the theologians and placed them on an island, providing for their every need, while they engage in discussions. We will love one another. This jest, though light-hearted, touches upon the tragic reality of a potential disconnect within certain intellectual circles between theology and life. The theologian who does not partake in the royal priesthood of the church and priests who disregard theological education run similar risks. This painful disjunction has contributed to tensions and discord between the world of theology and the ecclesial community. The one who is a theologian prays thus serves as both a question and a calling, an appeal and a divine judgment in our lives. To be a theologian then, it's essential to note that Averigris doesn't refer to modern academic theologians. He speaks of theologos, those who are versed in genuine theologia, which goes beyond merely memorising or conceptualising doctrines about God. To be a theologian in its truest sense, therefore, presupposes achieving a state of inner tranquillity and detachment, a state inseparable from pure and undistracted prayer, a condition granted to only a select few. To you we ascribe glory and praise for all eternity.